Well, we must be doing something right because we're doing episode two right now. Welcome to 84 Feet with Katie and Cap. I'm Brian Katie. That is all the Academy Girls Basketball head coach, Brian Capitola. As you can see on the bottom of the screen, yeah, we got an email address to vote to the show, and we have a Twitter X, Twitter X, I don't know what to call it at this point. Um, Twitter's at 84 Feet Podcast. Email is 84 Feet Podcast at gmail.com. Nice and simple there. Also, you can go to Facebook. Search for 84 Feet Podcast with Katie and Cap. Yes, it's a long name, but it's okay. You'll, <laughs> you'll, you'll be fine. Your fingers will be fine after you're typing. Um, yeah, give us a like. Also, hey, if you checked out the show uh, at first episode, make sure you give us a like and a review on Spotify or like the channel on YouTube. Comment, su subscribe, ring the notification bell so you know when new episodes are dropped. It's all good in the hood. Uh, that all being said, uh, I know you just had a busy weekend, and it had nothing to do with all the academy basketball. How you doing, man? You recovered? I'm good, good, good. Yeah, busy weekend, man. That was that was a whirlwind that came through Albany. So uh, I think everyone's still on a little bit of a high after last night's game. So um, it was a long four days, two games back to back. You don't think they're a long day, but you're there for five and a half, six hours. It's it turns into a long day sitting there uh, with 25, 30 minutes in between and the two minute timeouts they get uh for being on tv it's, yeah, it turns into a long day yeah i mean it's one thing because i've been doing juco announcing and, e and d3 announcing for the longest time so when i think of a double header i think okay it starts at let's say one o'clock typically at least one of the games is quicker than the other so you're done and walk out the door by 4 45 5 o'clock we'll say sure when you factor in all those TV timeouts <laughs> and then the mandatory, what is it, like a mandatory 25 they get between yep. games? Yep. And then yeah. I think 15 minute halftime. So everything was extended. So it was, I think we got there, uh, we got there Friday uh, with the first game being one o'clock around 12 or so. And we didn't get home until about 8 30, 9 o'clock. So that, it was, mm -hmm. it, it was a long day. Yeah. But and I, I can back with the traffic because, you know, they were pulling houses of 13, 13, five each day. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure traffic was not exactly the greatest around sure. downtown Albany at that <laughs> point. So, um, but yeah, I mean, just, you know, dig into it a little bit more. Cause, uh, uh I know a, a certain somebody, uh, that you're close to had a, a nice Iowa Caitlin Clark shirt going on, yeah. uh, for the weekend. Sure. All, all in all though, uh, what did you think of the experience? You know, the pomp and circumstance, I know like, a few of the the school bands were performing on the concourse and stuff. Yeah. There was, uh, it, it it felt like a, a four day pep rally. Really, when you think about it, it really was. It, it, I think every and everybody around kind of had their team, which was really cool. Uh, everyone kind of found it. I think everyone found out after day one or two where all the teams were staying because uh, there were some videos and things like that uh, uh, that were going around for people where they found where they were staying and. And they, they shot over to their hotels and kind of introduced themselves. And then they ended up around. Like, I know LSU ended up um, over at the new Lionheart on the green the one day. Um, and then they ended up at Hattie's. Uh, so that they got out and about in Albany. I, there is some stuff to do in Albany, contrary to what some people say. Um, but uh, it was just great. Like, I think going to the final final four last year, uh, obviously in Houston, is much different than this uh, in terms of the women. But where this was, what was it, three years ago, they hosted when UConn, Louisville came. Uh, and you thought those were big teams. But the the star power that was that was here, that was LSU and Iowa and South Carolina with Don Staley, just it was unmatched. Like everyone had energy. Everyone was rooting for everyone, which was funny. The same people that were in front of me were rooting for every team making a basket. So when that happens, it's a good day. Uh, but – I thought it was really good. The players seem to be really accessible to the kids going down there, slapping hands and getting autographs. And that's what it's all about ultimately is the kind of the growing the game. Like, I think that's something that will really grow it and having it in Albany uh, with the path that we've been going on for women's basketball. Um, it was great. Like it was, it was just great for our area. Um, and it was so well attended. Yesterday was as loud as any Mike Dean game, back in the Sienna era it was, it was, it was rocking. Like there was people in the last row of the 239, which is on the end. And uh, it was, it, people were ready to go from the jump. So it was really fun. Now, uh, 
this is the one thing I'm going to address negatively from what you you just mentioned. See, I I, I know we live in a time where you know we, we we're glorifying uh, student athletes to a point that some would say of idiocracy. And that, that's not my personal belief, but that's that's what a lot of people think. We're getting to the point now where we're treating them like professional wrestlers. We hunt down their hotels. Like is, we, we're really at that point now where I, uh, that's a bit much for me personally. Yeah. Like that's just that's just ridiculous. Uh, they didn't hide it very well. I don't think. I think that they once everyone knew that Iowa and Notre Dame were at the Hilton, and everyone found out that uh, LSU was at Hilton Garden Inn up by the hospital. Um, and then I, LSU was over at the uh, the Renaissance, and uh, so I think once everyone kind of found out those teams, uh, there was only a couple teams that actually opted out. And it's funny how finding out where they were put, they were all by seed, right? So that depending on what seed you were, you got the first choice choice of the hotel. So uh, I know uh, Notre Dame was over at the Marriott on Wolf Road. So um, I don't know. Like I, it's just that we obviously don't have the hotels that are downtown Albany that can hold everybody, but I think we do a really good job of like being able to to have teams. Unfortunately, we did not get a team at Albany Academy to come shoot around. Uh, having not, not a college three-point line, I think, hurt us a little bit, but we did offer it up, and we were one of the sites if they wanted to come shoot. But uh, I think a couple teams ended up at, at St. Rose. A couple teams ended up at U Albany on Sunday to shoot around. So, um, so that, that, but that brings me to something, though, because I saw a few pictures floating around from, uh, from Mr. Vincent. How – because I saw all, Iowa was one of the teams that used the Broadview Center at U Albany. Yep. How, how did Bella end up at U Albany while I like? Do you know how that all worked out? Yeah, she, she has a she has a little bit of a connection to the Seth Q people, so I'm sure that they found out about that kind of stuff. So, uh, um, but yeah, she, she her father works for works for the Seth Q. Let's just say that, but um. That makes a whole lot of sense. Um, okay. But I think a couple other people found out. The trainers found out. So there were some people that ended up over there, which was which is great. Obviously, it's a when you're not too many people in that building and you're there to watch those teams. I think a lot of people were upset. Not I guess upset's not the right word, but maybe it is. Uh, we're like Thursday having that open practice. That was always like an open practice on the Thursday before, whether it was 45 minutes for shoot around where everyone can go without tickets. Um I don't know if they shut that down for some reason, but the men's tournament, whenever we had it before, it was always like an open 45 minutes or 55 minutes of practice they were allowed. Right. And, um, I'm not sure why that didn't happen, but I'm sure there was a reason behind it. But I, uh, I don't know if there was necessarily a reason behind it, but I had heard something along the lines of them restricting access, just in general, like across sure. the board. I don't know if it's maybe I don't know if it was maybe something they instituted maybe. Uh, post COVID, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I just I I heard something about that before, and so that doesn't shock me too much. But again, I understand how that would definitely suck for people who, you know, were used to things one way, and now it's like, oh, well, okay, that cuts down an option for me to try and get close and get a picture or whatever it might be. Right. So, um, but all in all, now now here here's here's one thing I do want to mention now. I have to say, I, I'm going to give you credit here. The creativity in your strategic planning as to parking and getting access to and from the arena. See, I'd never thought about this <laughs> because I'm just used to thinking, all right, I'll just park in one of the garages or the lots of the arena, pay 5, 10, 15, 20 bucks, whatever it is. I can't even imagine what the price gouging was for this past <laughs> weekend. It, it was probably 50 bucks to park on 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 state street where there's no paying, but whatever. <laughs> um, walk me through this. Cause I have like the image in my head ish. Yep. So I want to make sure I got this straight. Um, try to envision downtown. all be in your heads. Everybody just think about it. Just close your eyes. Envision the egg. Envision empire state plaza and envision MVP arena and envision the skywalk that goes from the egg ish plaza over to the Capitol Center and then eventually MVP Arena. Yep. So if I get this straight, you parked basically right near the 
the area of like the entrance to the state museum and like that whole underpass yep. near that entrance into the the concourse underground at the plaza correct correct we did that friday uh and unfortunately didn't read the signs good enough and got a 50 dollars ticket uh because after after three o'clock it says buses only but there was also five other cars parked where i was so i it's 50 bucks we'll give it to the city of albany so it was <laughs> actually more expensive but yeah uh so friday we parked over there just basically walked the concourse maybe a th- i don't even know how far it is it's not very far walked the concourse inside and take a right uh which then leads you kind of if you've ever been to the egg before it leads you through where the egg elevators are to go up uh and you go around and then straight through that right to uh, you take about five flights of stairs as you keep going down and down and down and it leads right to the back of the times union center so that side there wasn't many people the front was packed the front was insane with the amount of people trying to get in the front door the back door i think maybe we got in every day with a minute and a half two minutes in the front door we went the one day it took maybe 25 minutes to get in the front door um and then last night was simple parked right by the capitol uh we walked across the the top of the uh the top of the concourse where the fountain fountains are and and natalie started pulling all the doors at the egg and one of them opened uh and (laughs) we went down the egg uh escalator that was off and out the back door of the egg and and then over (laughs) the same way we did the other days before across the skywalk so it was good. Uh, I think a lot of people figured it out after a day or two because parking was was a forty dollar parking last night is what I saw for the ones that were around the arena, and then the day prior, OGS garages and things they were twenty five bucks, uh, but anything that was kind of close to the arena was forty dollars. So um, again, if it's an experience you're going to once in a while, you're, you're okay to pay it. I think Yankee parking at this point is, is seventy dollars, so twenty five thirty bucks is not too bad. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't too far off when I said fifty. Yeah, no, it was close. It was forty dollars. I saw. I looked out the window and was like, "Oh, forty, man, that's not cheap." So, Jeez. well, was was that like the Eagle Street Garage you saw that was forty? It was. Yeah. So yeah. So the one that was actually attached to the arena was closed, other than other than Sweet Holders. Really? Uh, so the one that's actually attached to the arena that you walk through was right. not open. Right. The one uh, that's like, if you go up Eagle to the end, it's like yep to the right. It's basically merging the like it's basically right in between the end of the arena and the start Correct. of the capital center ish okay yeah, yeah, yeah that one was closed to anyone but sweet holders and then uh so the, the one that i saw was the one that's on the street there like right down the right, kind of right down the hill from uh uh the city beer hall there was a little lot right there it's yeah, yeah, yeah okay uh, so wasn't cheap price gouging at its <laughs> finest oh man but it was cool to see everybody. Like last night, we were driving home, we had Rhode Island people, Massachusetts people in front of us. None of them know how to drive the the, the ramps and things like that. People making right-hand turns. and uh, So that's always fun to see. But uh, I, I think overall, like I think it was a great weekend for Albany in terms of women's basketball and the commerce. Because Albany definitely got hit with a lot of stuff when COVID hit. So right. there's not a lot of people. There's a, They lost half the people that used to be downtown currently even still. So um it was a good. It was a good weekend overall. Uh, no, no real incidents other than other than the one incident that was around the arena. But that's about it. Listen, if you want to talk to me about uh, the uh, the decrease in downtown Albany entertainment, that's a whole topic for a whole another different kind of show. Sure. <laughs> um, and we don't get into politics here on this show. So that being said, um, yeah. Uh, speaking of March Madness, it's actually something I want to get into quick with the. Uh, the two young ladies who are anxiously waiting to get on the show. One's a junior, one's a sophomore, one's been around the program for three years now. The other two, they are both members of Coach Capitula's Lady Bears of the Albany Academy. Oh man, I, I'm actually I'm actually pretty excited about this because now I'm gonna have names on the bottom of my screen, not in the actual feed. So I can actually tell which one's which without their uniforms on. That's pretty cool. Uh, we got Eva Gito, Morgan VN. Ladies, good evening. How are you today? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm doing well. Oh, see. Okay. Now, I, okay. Once the little more, the facial structure. Okay. Now I'm getting it now. <laughs> Listen, I got to learn because I, I got to announce your games this weekend, but that's another topic for another day. Um, first off, um, 
whichever one wants to chime in first, go ahead and the other one after. Um, we were just talking about the uh, last four days in downtown Albany and the craziness of uh, the women's basketball tournament. Um, what were your thoughts about the tournament coming into Albany and having all that attention and what you th- you know what it meant to you as women's ba- as you know women's basketball players to see all the attention being given to the game like that? I thought it was really cool. I thought that um, especially Caitlin Clark and like um, Angel Reese, Flaje, Paige um, Beckers. I mean, they weren't coming into Albany, but all these big names that like we hear about now, it's getting bigger than like men's collegiate. So I think that's pretty cool that we're like women are being more noticed as um, in women's sports. Yeah, I think it was also cool that it was so close to our home and how so many of like our friends and us got to go like see it and see all these big names like right near our houses. That was really good experience. Now, did either of you happen to get out to any of the games or go I through didn't... the people taking wrong turns on streets in downtown <laughs> Albany? I wasn't able to. I was in Philly for Easter with my sister, so. I didn't get to either, but a lot of my friends went, and they said it was pretty cool. Yeah, thank, thanks, Coach. Thanks a lot. You're the only <laughs> one on here that went. Listen, I texted who wants tickets, and the first one that responded back got them. So it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. You know, <laughs> you know, you and Coach Oregon just enjoying the high life. It's okay. Whatever. It's it's, it's fine. Uh, all right. So uh, first thing I want to get into. Um, I do want to go and reflect back specifically with Morgan on the state title game um, because um, a, a big topic of conversation that I had because um, so the way the state championship schedule worked out that Saturday was there was an elongated break from the day session leading into the night session, which your class B title game was uh, the first game of. So I was able to have long conversations with, Coach Cap and Coach Oregon and uh, Morgan, your father as well, uh, <laughs> Coach VN. And the one of the main topics I brought up was how the players were feeling because I knew they were pretty – you're all pretty banged up, especially the, the main, you know, five and six in the rotation going into the weekend. But then I see you come out for warm-ups. And for lack of a better phrase, you were able to walk, let alone run. Uh <laughs> How, like, obviously, it's the end of the season. You got to leave it all out there. How, first off, what was the issue going on with you? And just kind of walk us through what you were going through just to get on the floor and even warm up, let alone start in those two games. Um, so I got pretty badly hurt at our game against Governor in like when we were far out in Potsdam in like the first quarter and I had like a pretty bad like bone bruise. So I just was with Ron like pretty much the entire week that we had in between our games just to like try to get better. Um, And I was obviously still like in pain, but I wasn't like, there really wasn't an option. Like I wanted to, I needed to play in those games. So like, although I wasn't like a hundred percent, like I still had to be there for like everyone on our team. Like, I didn't want to let them down, so I just played through it. <laughs> now, you, you brought something specific that I know. You know, actually, I'll let Coach ask the question. Do you want to ask the question related to the Governor game that you're asking anybody who's been going up to Potsdam? No, they, they know what our feeling was like because we were all we were saying it out loud to get me off the bus. <laughs> so I heard the bus trip was very interesting to and from Potsdam. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, thoughts? What, what kind of craziness are we talking about here? <laughs> um, going there, it was very dark, and the road was awful, <laughs> to say the least. Awful. <laughs> On the way home, it was awful, and there happened to be like four inches of snow that just wanted to show up out of the blue. So, if you've ever seen the movie Funny Farm, Brian, which I think you might have. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the mailman that throws the mail out the window, that's similar to how our bus driver was at certain times. Uh, so coming up to curbs and things like that, it was like a last second, let's break here because we're going to end up in a pond kind of thing. So uh, 
but it was a great, like it was a great charter. I mean, we're lucky to have a charter bus, but mm -hmm. just that ride, if you don't know it at, at nine o'clock at night or eight 30 at night, it, it wasn't great. So. Y'all were better off if you got like those weird 12 passenger vans at that point. Yeah. <laughs> Voice would have had a little more control, I guess, would be the best way to put it, supposedly. I don't know. It's just that, uh, that's awful. That's awful. Um, okay. So, uh, open it a question. Either one of you can jump in, both of you can jump in. Um, one of the things that sets Academy apart from, um, we'll say, 90% of schools in the Section 2 area is that, yes, you're committed to, uh, because you're part of the Public High School Association, you're committed to uh, a certain conference with the Colonial Council, but you also have some flexibility there as far as different teams you play, whether it's playing up and, and facing double A schools like, like, uh, or, you know, doing the, the April park holiday tournament during Christmas break, or like you've had a chance to scrimmage a couple of teams like Bethlehem and shaker over the course of the season. When you do get those opportunities to play out of league and, and play based on classifications, one or two steps up, how much do you feel like that helped prepare you over the last few years, as far as, you know, being able to face that competition so that when you get into sectionals and beyond later on, you, you're, you're used to the atmosphere and the pressure and the, the, that level of competition that you're facing. Um, personally, I, I love it because throughout, like in our season, we're playing good teams, but a majority of them we are beating by 15 20 so i feel like it's good for us because we we have a good all well-rounded team so especially because we're playing these games like when we have um like a break between like our schedule i think it helps prepare us and like keeps us on our toes and getting us ready and stronger for our next game yeah i'd have to agree i think it's great for us to play like teams that are in like higher classes than us and i think it like also, like Eva said, it prepared us. And just to see, like, teams that might be more aggressive than the ones that we play in, like, our regular season, just, like, get us ready for, like, if we didn't get the calls we wanted and stuff, being able to play through that and know what it's like. And one of those teams that you do play in the Colonial Council um, happened to uh, be two of the very few losses that you suffered in the season, which was the Catholic Central, who, as we all know, went on to win – uh, a state title in Class A with Coach DeBacco. When you look at those two games, what about those two losses to Catholic Central? Do you feel like helped you know, the team rally around and say, hey, we know what we did wrong there. Let's not do that again and build from this and go on a run like we did? Yeah, I think, I mean, we know Catholic Central is like an amazing all-around team, just like us, and that was our best competitor throughout probably the whole year, I'd have to say. Um, but I think we just like, we knew, especially right off of our first game of the season, like we knew what we had to do to get better, and we competed really well both times, but I think they definitely helped us just to like see a good challenge and know what we have to do to beat good teams. Right, and I think it also prepared us more, like, mentally, because I think, especially coming off of our season from last year, we um, went undefeated, obviously, until our last game, but I think we kind of came into our season, like, kind of expecting to win, and I think because of that, it set us back a little bit, but I think it prepared us more mentally to bring us um, – stronger into our next coming games and knowing that we have to earn it and it's not all given. Now you mentioned what you did the year before real quick there, uh, Eva, and obviously the, 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 the names that stand out that weren't there anymore for this year were your three seniors. Um, obviously there was uh, Aaron Hubin, there was Sage Randolph and still Yana Monsoris. What was it about those three? Uh, what kind of impact they left behind that helped, um, uh, put put that 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 juice that 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 drive into all the underclassmen that were returning for this past season that just finished and and beyond because you only have two more seniors that are leaving from this year's team. What was it about what those three did though specifically in that senior class that helped really 
put Academy girls up at that pedestal again of being one of the elite in section two and, and in the state. Overall, I think genuinely they were just great like leaders on and off the court. I mean, I still talk to them and even though they're obviously in college now, but they pushed us to be better, but also like made it fun and enjoyable to win and be there with all of them. Yeah, I'd have to agree. I'd say like the bond that they made with all of us is what helped us because obviously in practices and stuff, they challenged us to like play at their level and to, you know, play with D1 athletes. I mean, it was great. And Sage and Aaron and Silly were all such like great role models for all of us on and off the court, helping us just with like everything and always being there for us. Now, I, I got to ask a question specific to one of them. And Cap, you can chime in too if you want. Stiliana as wild and silly as she seems to be. When it was like, anytime she was warming up, she just had this, but lack of a better phrase, she had this swag that was like, like y'all, y'all were like here with your energy level, and she's like bouncing off the walls, and uh, like, <laughs> it, it was kind of psychotic. Is she, is she like that all the time, or is that just how she is on game day? That's still. <laughs> she always she always just brought the energy, and she honestly like made it fun throughout the entire season, like. She brought the fun into like basketball, even though it was such a serious like thing. Like she definitely just made it enjoyable every single day. I would agree. I mean, Stilly is definitely unique, but in the best way possible. She um she's always like even if like I was having a bad day at school or just coming to practice and her just making me laugh, just that's just how she is. Do you want to add anything, Coach, or do you want to leave it at that? No, that's it was like a 9 a.m., 9.30 a.m. practice. She was always upbeat. The funniest thing that we still carry over with Stilly is um, she used to do the best thing with plays. Like, you'd call a play out, and the play would run, and it would happen. Like, it'd be over with, and she'd be like, and you'd be like hey, Stilly, you're supposed to be – oh, you're right, Coach, you're right. Like, oh, she always say, oh, like, I, like, all right, well, the play is completely over now. So, uh, But she would make up for it, like, just – her effort level and energy level and um, some of the stuff she would do. And she took over some of the games last year for us at times. So, um, but definitely just like just a, a silly ball of energy that you, you want to have around. So it was definitely a fun, a fun time to have her around. And I think I have a perfect comparison to another team in section two. Um, there's a lot of interchangeable traits between Stiliana and Albany High's Jordan Johnson. Sure. To, I, like aside from hair color, Jordan likes to mix up with the hair colors. But all in all, as far as energy and style of play, it, similar-ish, sure. I would say between the two. You agree with me? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay. Um, she might not, still, he might not have been showing up at Catholic Central games and and yelling from behind my <laughs> seat, but that's okay. That's that was Jordan. Psychotic, psychotic. That's okay. Um, now, uh, let's see what else. Oh, Eva. Um, now you. This was your second year. You just finished uh, with the academy, and you actually originally came over uh, from Gilderland. Uh, just walk through the, the difference in approach between um, the coaching and the mentality that you worked with over in the Gilderland district versus what you have received these two these first two years with academy and coach cap and the rest of his staff um i think at gilderland um the difference between gilderland and academy is that at academy i feel like we have so much more of a well-rounded team like we all play basketball throughout the whole year whereas at gilderland um there's only a couple of us that really wanted to play and then others just kind of did it just to like do a sport or like just do it for fun which is completely fine but I think um being at academy it definitely built more of my mental um toughness and all that stuff just because um my mom just came in <laughs> just because um like I, I knew I had to work harder and I knew that for me to get to where I want to be in the future, um, 
I just, I had to put in that extra step, that extra effort. And Coach Cap definitely has helped me a lot with that and becoming more mentally prepared and just more physically ready for the next step. Now, who do you, both of you draw your inspiration from as far as whether it's the mentality you use to play the game, your style of play? Is there anyone specific um, that you, 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 know, you, you learn under the tree from, whether it's by watching their videos or talking to them, whatever it may be. Who do you both draw your inspiration from when it comes to basketball? Um, For me, I, especially within the past couple of years, obviously watching college basketball has been, um, on the women's side, has been um, a big inspiration. But also I started uh, varsity basketball in eighth grade at Gilderland and I played with Valencia who's now at Siena and I feel like seeing her succeed and becoming um, obviously a great player that she is she's she uh, is hurt now so she'll be up back next season but seeing everything that um, she's done and her being um, one of my sister's closest friends and having her like by my side like putting shots up and all that stuff I feel like that's really um, been a big inspiration for me. I feel like Sage has guided me a lot ever since I first came to Academy as like an eighth grader. Like the, she was the first person to just like welcome me in and teach me like the work ethic that I needed to get to be able to succeed at such a young age. And she just has always been there for me and always helped me just work and get better. And I look up to her a lot. And Morgan, you just mentioned how basically just finished your third year at Academy now. Um, so you've been there for the full ride with Coach Cap of, you know, coming out of COVID, getting the first that first full season. Um, I want to say, and I know I, I know you'll correct me, Coach. Sixteen and seven that two years ago, right? Close ish. Six, yeah, sixteen and six. Sixteen six. Okay, yep. sorry, I gave you one more loss. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, so you, you've seen, but you've seen the evolution of how things went with Sage and Stilly still being there and. And then the the kind of one you had your freshman year and getting as far as you did and then having this run all the way to the state championship game your sophomore year. You know, what is it uh, about this process that you've recognized with Coach Cap and the growth overall of the program? Uh, like, what's been the most important parts, do you think, that have really allowed this program to accentuate all its positives and, and really succeed? Well, we obviously do have a great coaching staff with Cap and all of our assistants, but they're just they're always there for us. They make us work hard. We like our entire team, like as Eva said earlier, like we all play AAU, so we're working the entire off season and we start like workouts in like the summer for the actual school season. So like we pretty much play all year round and we're we're just always working and I think since my eighth grade year, like it just progressively has gotten more and more like to where we just want it. And like the girls that have came in and stepped up from JV, like we're just, we just keep working and that's why we've gotten better. And I have to ask the, the obvious follow-up question that I referenced briefly in passing when I asked you about your injury at the start of the interview. Um, having your father also as a coach and sitting on the sideline of every single game, is that more pressure for you? Is that more drama? Is that, are, are there some weird card rides home sometimes? <laughs> like, how does that all, how does that all work out in the end between the two of you? Um, I mean, I guess sometimes it feels like it might be a little more pressure, but like he's always kind of been like around for basketball with me so it's really not like different he's kind of just like another coach to me and I mean when I play basketball like I don't really think of him as my dad to be honest he just is like my coach and I mean sometimes I guess it like can feel like pressure but most of the time like I know he has my back and he'll always be there to support me and having known him since I helped out at Sparks for a little bit, I know he's a good dude. So, hi, Jerry. How you doing? Um, all right. So, um, speaking of the coaching staff, obviously the two other coaches we haven't named specifically yet, Coach Oregon, Coach Oscam, um, you can both chime in on this. Uh, what they bring to the sideline and 
um, and help the growth of everyone that's involved with the team? Um, I think just um, because they are women, I feel like they do like kind of understand um, like our emotions more and that stuff. So I feel like they help with that, but also um, they do like, if Coach Cap is helping, like having us go through a drill, they do add like their little comments here and there to that, and they obviously have their input that helps us a lot and gets us through our practices and drills. And even um, during our games, they're always there to support. They're cheering us on, but they're also great coaches and help us. So, yeah, I totally agree with everything Eva just said, and they're always they're always there to support us, and they have both bonded with our whole team, like on a different level. And Jackie also put like herself, she, since she's a trainer, she does help us a lot with like ball handling and like more moves and shots that we wouldn't really get if we didn't have like a trainer to help us out. And Cap, if you want to chime in, uh, I know Jackie specifically, you, you know, you known her for a while, you reined her in and, said gotcha come on in uh that that sounded really weird and wrong but whatever <laughs> um just because i know like she obviously does like her own performance training and camps and stuff like how how pivotal is that to have somebody like her on the sideline along with you coach organ and coach via yeah no it's great it's been great to <clears throat> just see a different set of eyes uh, obviously her being a coach at the college level uh more recently being at the d3 level um and being able to break down, she did a really good job for a lot of the kids breaking down their film for them. So she'd go stay up midnight, 1 a.m. and be up and breaking down game film uh, and just correction stuff. Just showing them like, hey, did you, did you see this? What were you thinking? Uh, that was a, So I think that was a huge thing for the kids to see. Um, that was her job at, at, at her college prior uh, was breaking down like the synergy film after game. So uh, and I think sometimes when you're in games and you say something to someone, they're like, what did I do? Why am I out? So I think when they see it visually, I'm a better visual learner myself. Um, so after you see it, um, you definitely like learn from it rather than being told something. And you, you're like, well, I don't understand what I did. So she did a really good job of showing them and then making corrections on the fly. Or if she saw something that, that, um, that maybe they could have finished a certain way or something uh, they could have changed a little bit offensively. She was, she was good to chime in and tell them. So, um, so she was great. Obviously, Coach Oregon definitely helped on the defensive side. So um, that's kind of runs in the family on that side. So if there's corrections or things we needed to do, and she had feedback on that. But uh, but again, our I, I said this the other day in AAU practice too. Like at no point is it ever a dictatorship. So our coaches have free range to kind of tell the girls or speak to the girls individually. I'm not the only one that's allowed to have a voice for our team. So um, some teams are different than that. But I think – giving everyone kind of a voice to, to say something. It, it, sometimes it does hurt you because it's different voices hearing you, but sometimes it does help you because certain people, right. They, they respond to different people better. So I might be good with Morgan and someone else even might be better with Jackie talking to her. So it's good to figure out who the best person is to speak with that person. If you have an issue or you have a problem or you're trying to correct something on the court, um, you kind of you know the personalities that can definitely get through to them a little bit better. So. And just mentioned AAU. Uh, both of you ladies are going to be playing on the or playing on Elevate 17U with a bunch of other Section Two and state recognized talent as well. But I, I got to ask, why are you torturing yourself and having to go through an AAU season with Cap still coaching you? What are you doing? <laughs> I told them they had choices to go wherever they wanted. <laughs> no, we love Cap. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like Elevate is just I mean, I've been on a couple different AAU teams, but Elevate is special and I feel like the group of girls we have and it's just so much fun. Like we have a great time and we love playing, so yeah. It's good energy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't have to lie just cuz he's on the screen with you. It's okay. Um, but no, seriously, um about AAU for for both of you. Um when you're going into AAU season, um, obviously it's a little different structure than school season, to say the least. Um, when you're going into it, are there specific goals you have in mind or um, you know, certain things you're looking to work on? Does it change year to year? What, what's the kind of strategy involved for the two of you going into 
it going into AAU and particularly this season in general? Um, I'd say my biggest goal is probably just to focus on like the whole like scoring a little bit more, but not being like selfish, just being able to like attack more. And I definitely would like to get some recognition from some schools. That would also be a plus. <laughs> Yeah, I would say the same. I mean, um, being a junior, obviously, I am looking to play in college, but um, I would say I agree with uh, put, getting some more shots up, but also not being selfish. I mean, getting the assist is a stat is a stat. Filling up the stat sheet is obviously probably one of my main goals, but also just staying confident throughout the whole um AAU season because I feel like confidence does play a big role for me at least um when I when I have confidence I definitely play a lot better than when I'm kind of down on myself so that's probably my biggest goal I've seen enough games where both of you shouldn't have any confidence issues by now but uh so we mentioned last year's senior class I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up this year's senior class obviously Bella Vincent Mariana Bischoff um what did they bring to the table uh, as seniors and de facto leaders of the team so to speak what did they both bring to the table um in their own you know different ways as far as you know helping the squad maintain focus and and you know get after the goals that you had at hand um i think that bella in particular definitely takes things very seriously and she's definitely a teammate that you can rely on and mariana helped us in practice she's always i mean she wasn't really like playing on the court but she was definitely um active cheering and all that stuff she definitely supported us a lot and that was really appreciated yeah i'd have to agree with eva bella has always just been a great leader and she's an amazing player but mariana also led just in a different way and was always supporting us as much she could and cheering as loud as she could for us every single game and practice and bella just looks angry all the time like, i don't know am I, am I wrong am i wrong in that assessment cap or yeah no she's never really angry she's oh, no. she's pretty happy-go-lucky most of the time and she's usually bouncing around uh i mean and again if have you knew how bad she was hurt that saturday against south uh, that friday against southwestern like she wasn't walking she hadn't practiced prior to that all week so um so to come in friday and and just i mean she was taking people off the dribble, knocking down shots. So reaching a thousand um, career points, no big deal. Right, thousand whatever. career points. Uh so it was great. Um but yeah, she just she's just tough. Like we just that's what I think sometimes sets us apart. We just have a bunch of tough kids uh that are just tough. Like they and it's not even so much like they're not stupid tough. So it's not like they're playing when they're not supposed to. Mm -hmm. They're just gonna be something that's bothering them a little bit. They're they're not really their, their team over me. So, um, which I definitely appreciate as a coach. Um, but they just did a great job all year. Like they did a great job coming to practice, good attitudes. Uh, cause obviously that's, that's part of the, part of the whole thing is just attitude and things like that is, is 80% of what you're coaching. So, cause you're coaching 11 different personalities. Um, so, and I'm not sure Ron would allow stupid tough, honestly. I, I, I don't think he would be. No. Like, no. I mean, you could borderline say maybe Morton was being stupid tough on the title game, but otherwise, <laughs> yeah, you know. No, we had a more we had an injury report. It was funny. He texted me an injury report at like two o'clock of what the practice day was going to look like. Doubtful, doubtful, it, doubtful. Yeah, it looked like doubtful. it looked like you look on it before your your Sunday fantasy football. Who, who you're going to put in? You wouldn't have probably put Morgan or Bella in that Friday game. So, uh, and and where they ended up. So that's just that's just a testament to who they are as, as young women and, and people and, and how much they love the team. So. And yeah, Morgan's about to start a AU season this weekend. Psycho. <laughs> I don't get it. Anyways. Um, all right. So I do have a couple of silly questions. I want to get off my chest before we get out of here. One, uh, did Van Gogh or Andy Warhol visit your wall behind you, Eva? What, what, what is, what is that? What's going on there? Um, well, my wall I did during COVID <laughs> when I was bored. That was you? Yeah. But you did all that. I did this, yeah. But this my sister made. It's ASAP Rocky. <laughs> so Wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. I, 
I wasn't making fun of it. I was just like, I just, I'd never seen somebody's wall like that. So, okay, all right, yeah. cool, cool. Um, next, um, do either of you think Alex Leonard could give Caitlin Clark a run for her money in a three point contest? Uh, <laughs> see, this is where we don't give Alex the cockiness, <laughs> but um, no. I, I think that would be a good thing to see, but Caitlin Clark would definitely probably win that. I mean, Alex could probably compete. She but could. I do think Caitlin Clark would probably be <laughs> her. See, like, to me, when I think about Alex in Section 2 now and ones who have gone to college last few years, I think we'd have to put her Bologna, Peyton Graber. Am I missing anyone, Cap? Uh, like some big time three point shooters. Yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to think of who could shoot from 30 plus and be yeah. at least relatively accurate. Ellie, Ellie Surf. Oh, mm. uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Shout out Ellie Surf. I know she's a fan of the podcast. How you doing? <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good four. We should just do our own three point contest. We should. <laughs> who cares? Who cares about these 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 conference all star games that nobody really wants to play? And the whatever, never mind. Um, <laughs> now here's here's the other silly question I have, because uh, for a couple of years when Coach Brian Frusho was still at boys with the boys side, um, with Hamir Wright and my cousin Andre Johnson or Andre Jackson, you know that's whatever. Um, just random name drop. It's okay. Um, when I was helping out there for a couple of years, um, there was still that line of demarcation where it was only academy for boys, only academy for girls. But now it's not that. It's officially the Albany Academies, period. That's it. So I, I got to ask, now that the girls program has gone to the States back-to-back -back years, any headbutting, clashing, egos being checked at the door between the two teams? I I know the boys team is still pretty decent, you know, with uh, mm -hmm. Cyrus Matty is still there. Um, is it Art, um, Art Foster I'm thinking of yeah. or something? They, they still got some decent kids there, but y'all going to States back-to-back. -back. I'm just saying, like, I, if I'm going to compare resumes, I'd probably take your resume. Yeah, we, we definitely, like, talk a little trash to each other, but I feel like it's all love. Like, in the at the end of the day, like, they always come support us. We always su go support them. Like we do, we do like each other a lot. But yeah, we definitely talk some trash. <laughs> right, I agree. I mean, I haven't been at the academies for too long, but we definitely do get a lot more credit. And we always joke that we want to play pickup with them, but <laughs> we never actually get to doing that. But I feel like that'd be an interesting thing to watch if we did. <laughs> We'd have to make a rule. Cyrus isn't allowed inside of 15 feet. Because <laughs> that's just no offense. It's just unfair. Like, right. yeah. What are you doing with Cyrus yeah. when he gets inside of 15 feet? Like, whatever. Unless you, <laughs> unless you want to try undercutting him, like somebody tried doing to Andre from from Green Tech. But that's yeah. That's a story for another day. Um, <laughs> anything I miss, Cap? No, I think it's good. I I think the other thing too that they do every game, if you watch. Whenever the boys come and we have uh, – we're so lucky to have someone that has uh, the Stephanie McCauley who's on staff. For, she's not on staff, but her husband's on the boys' staff, and she owns I Smile. So uh, she's able to make four or five of our games, and, and, and the girls go to the boys' games as well when she's there. But they all take a group photo at the end of every game together as the boys and the girls. So that's kind of a thing that's, that started maybe two years ago. So um, – it just shows the togetherness with the boys supporting the girls and the girls supporting the boys. So um, sometimes they ask me like, Hey, can we get out of practice earlier so we can get across the street or, um, and the boys do a really good job of getting out of their practices and getting across the street to support us. So. And weren't they part of the rowdy bunch that was there at Hudson Valley that weekend too? Oh yeah. They're, yeah. They were there. The, last year was even what this year was great. Last year was wilder when the Hill Catskill game was fun just for them. Uh, but I think they, the environment last year, the Catholic high environment, uh, of last year's game. I don't think you could duplicate that. Uh, e even last, like it, you could compare it to obviously one of 14,000 people, but to last night with Iowa, last year's Catholic high game uh, in our gym. Um, I mean, the, 
the fire marshal, thank God, didn't stop by. Um, <laughs> but there was enough people and enough noise. That was like playing a playoff game uh, and playing in a state final. So I think yeah. that atmosphere the girls had been through. So when we got to Hudson Valley, I feel like our we were already like we had our feet wet already. So that, that this, wasn't too big. This game you're referring to was it at Academy? At Academy, yeah. So we, our whole upstairs was full. We had we had to move people from the the railings because there was too many people. Right, because um, unless something's drastically changed the last five years since I've last been in that gym, y'all only got bleachers on one side. Yeah, yeah. We're like we could probably put a hundred people sitting down, uh, and then probably another two hundred upstairs. And there was two hundred upstairs plus people behind the two hundred that were upstairs. So. Um, but it was a great environment to play in. Like it was a, it, it was good. And, uh, it, just those kind of crowds, right. You don't ever know what to expect when you get in front of those big crowds. And, uh, and that's the, the one thing they did constantly this year was they got in front of big crowds and they didn't, they didn't, uh, as coach Fruce used to say, they didn't crap their pants, uh, when <laughs> that was what always happened. So they, uh, they, they were in it and they were used to it. And, um, uh, I told some of them even after like the the southwestern game, which was that Friday. I I didn't even realize what the score was, so I keep saying it over and over again. But I had no idea. Like you're in the moment, you're in the game. I didn't realize we had like Eva decided to go nuclear at some point during the game. Bella Vincent decided to go nuclear. Uh, Alex started to go crazy. So you have three three twenty point scores in a game. I guess you have a good shot to win. But um, that I think was was just a they wanted that game really bad. And then the, the championship game was, uh, was one that we wanted. It just didn't go the way we wanted to, but we'll be back. This group will be back again. Uh, thank God next year. And um, we'll give it another shot this, this time, just in class a. So. I did think of one more question in the midst of cap, just talking and talking. I'm kidding. Um, I did think of one more question cap. I know how you feel about this person. So you don't have to chime in. Um, I, I I want an honest opinion from both of you. I don't expect anything less uh, about one of your teammates that uh, I'm trying to remember. Same year as Eva, I believe. Um, I called her probably one of the two or three best point guards I saw all year, which should give away who I'm referring to. Um, Liana Williams. She got... Uh, I got nothing. Like I, that's that's how much I talked about her in the last two months. She's just, she's nutty on a whole nother level. And I felt like her jump from freshman year to sophomore year, like if you saw it, you know what I mean. I, you two were probably even had moments where either on the court or on the bit on the sideline watching her, just like, okay, all right, yeah, you do you. I mean, how, how did you guys feel about uh, the way Liana's developed and what she means to this squad going forward? Um, Lee works so hard and I feel like she, she definitely deserves all the credit that she's been getting recently because she, she's an amazing, like all around player. Her defense is insane and her offense has improved so much to like where she can take anyone off the dribble basically. And she can finish over girls that are a foot taller than her. And like, she, she just, she's amazing. And she, works so hard and she deserves everything that she gets honestly i'm really proud of Leah. i mean all uh, me morgan and liana we all have different roles than we had last year but stepping up and being our main point guard this year i mean she's she's done great i mean she's honestly the best point guard i've probably ever played with and her defensive side obviously it leads us into our offense and I feel like that's what makes her so great as well and she's just so shifty she can like Morgan said take anyone all right I, I I'm, I'm done cap you got anything else or are you good <laughs> no I'm good I'll, I'll see them I'll, I'll see them for the next four and a half months and then get like a break in August for maybe a few weeks and then see them again for another six months so uh <laughs> Wow, you make it sound like you're going to be sick of them more than they're going to be sick of yeah, you. Yeah, no. I, I thought I would he take a break. He loves us. Like I, I always thought you always think the season ends, you're going to take a break. And uh, I didn't really take a break this year. So uh, at some point, that'll – that'll maybe the end of April, I'll take a little bit of a break. But um, I, I didn't feel like I wanted to take a break. So last year, I wanted to take a break after last year. But, again, this year, you lose a game. 
Um, but it doesn't matter. Like it, it, we keep saying like we lost the game, but uh, but we had it doesn't define our season. So, um, I mean, you when know. you're so good, your season goes longer. You should know this by now. It's another month. That's what. It, that's the. That's the other part which you don't realize. You're you're playing a month longer than when your season would have ended. So, right. It's definitely, and you get six more days a week practice. Uh, you throw in scrimmages there. You throw in games once in a while. So it it's a long time. A month is a long time. It doesn't sound like it, but to add a month onto something, it's it's a long time. It's going to be year after year after year after year. Like, get used to it. God, suck it up. <laughs> yeah, girls, tell him to suck it up when, when he gets like this, all right? Just do that for me. Uh, Eva Gito, Morgan VN, uh, great having you both on. Thank you for joining the show. And uh, I'll catch you Saturday because I heard there's somebody announcing the 17U games at, at – <laughs> Uh, at the tournament, I don't, I don't know. Somebody named Brian, I don't know. I don't know. It's gonna be weird. Uh, but thank you, ladies. Thank you for coming out. Definitely appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. All right, that was uh, Morgan VN and Eva Chito. That was good stuff. What'd you think? Yeah, good. They did. They did a good job. They, they're, they're definitely two of the many kids that we have that are two of our captains too. So, um, they're gonna expect big things from them next year and. They're trending in the right direction, that's for sure. I know Eva took a couple of college widgets lately and, and is going through that process, which can be stressful, which we can have a whole other show on that stuff and the recruiting side of things. But um, uh, I'm just happy with their progress and who they are as people. That's that's obviously – basketball is very little. So, Yeah, I mean, uh, and I guess we'll just – I know we just have a few minutes because we're – we're gonna to try to not be like our, our our first show was big. It was a glamorous debut, but we're we're really trying to make sure these shows aren't you know they're around the one hour mark. But that is one quick thing I just want to bring up before we wrap up is um, related to kind of sort of the whole college recruiting side of things, and we we addressed this a little bit uh, last week with Allison O'Hanlon, and after the fact from the interview we recorded with her with Alex. Moses, excuse me, because um, both of their head coaches last week decided one decided to retire, the other took a new job at Eastern Michigan. So I mean, and it's become very commonplace for you know as much as we talk about the transfer portal with players, you get a lot of a coaching carousel going on, whether it be college football, college basketball. Those are the two main sports where it really happens the most. Hypothetically, let's say you had a kid who was, let's say Bella Vincent, for example. Yeah, Bella Vincent, she commits to a school, say, in November. But then come this time of the year, as the season's wound down for colleges, that school that she had committed to, coach jumps strip and takes off. If you had that situation, how would you help guide that kid into, you know, uh, you know, you know, looking at things from a new perspective as far as staying or going and what that would be all in Sure. I mean, the hardest part, I guess, always is the relationship that you build with these coaches. Um, sometimes you're talking to them for a year, year and a half before you commit to them. So I think that would be the hardest part to really uh, overcome is you're going to walk into something brand new. You're not sure how, what their style is. You're not really sure who they are as a person. So, uh, and, and uh, Allison said it last week as well, like, she coached Jabir like she just met she loved him as a person so much a coach so um but I think in, in terms of I tell the kids that we have like if basketball was like went away tomorrow this is this a school that you'd end up going that you'd go to without basketball so I think it's the same kind of thing like if if basketball doesn't exist or your coach leaves like is this a school you would see yourself staying at for four years because you never really want to choose a school just based off of a, off of one thing so there's so much more to your college experience than, than just playing. Obviously, if you're a Division One athlete, it's going to take majority of your college experience away. But um, I think it's just a matter of it. I would I would guide them whatever they needed me for in terms of uh, talking them through it and my staying and my going. But ultimately, like it's about what's best for them. Uh, if a coach is leaving, if the player feels like they're in a weird spot and they're going to bring a new coach in you never really know where you're going to fall. Like she could be completely outside of what, how I play or what my style is. So I think just telling them uh, if basketball didn't exist, would you want to be here? That's step one. And then you kind of move on and you kind of learn the coach's personality uh, from there. So. Yeah. I mean, I think in the end, the most important thing, um, obviously 
if you're an athlete, you know, it's important to try to have that relationship with, um, you know, coaching staff and the players you'll be playing with and all that. But in the end, you know, I'm not trying to undermine the basketball, the athletic side of things. You're also trying to set yourself up for your future beyond sports because sure. the percentages of, you know, going from high school to college are small enough as it is. The percentage of going from college to any kind of pro, uh, any kind of pro league is even smaller than that. Sure. So in the end, you also, you know, I, I was, I would say this and it kind of sounds like what you were going towards too is you want to make sure wherever you end up going, isn't just about the sport you're playing. It's also about, you know, if you want to be within a certain range of time near home, if it falls inside of that, um, you know, the if it, the kind of community that you want to be around, whether you want to be in a suburban community or rural or whatever it may be, yep. um, the the major, if you already decided on the major at 17 or 18, is that really the major you want to go with? And if it is, do they have that? Do they have the coursework around that? The, you know, it's a lot bigger than just what you're doing between the lines sure. in the end. So that's... I agree. Yep. That's my two cents. Yep. Um, all right. So that wraps that up. That was episode two of 84 Feet with Katie and Cap. Thanks again to Eva Gito and Morgan VN from Coach Cap's Lady Bears of the Albany Academy for coming on the show. Um, don't forget, as has been scrolling the whole time during the show, we're on Twitter X, Twitter X, at 84 Feet Podcast. You can also email any questions, comments, concerns. 84 feet podcast at gmail.com. Also, hey, if you're listening to this on Spotify, great. Like the channel, rate the show, and yeah, uh, turn on notifications so you know when each new episode drops. If you're watching the video version of the show on YouTube, thank you again. Like the video, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, all that jazz. And uh, yeah, that all being said, now that I sound like a marketing show for 60 <laughs> seconds, ain't a Parting words you want to drop, Cap, before we wrap it. No, I think I think women's basketball is is on the rise, and I think we got to see it. Uh, you got to see it a couple weeks ago in the state tournament, and you got to see it this weekend and uh, at the biggest, at the highest level with the with the college level. So I think we're going in a in a great trajectory. It's just a matter of how high they can go at this point. So much agreed on all counts. There. Um, that being said, that's. Brian Capitula, I'm Brian Cady, and uh, that's episode two. We'll catch you again next week, where we're going to dive into some some AAU banter, uh, as we we briefly mentioned AAU at points with uh, our two guests and with Coach. You know, we'll we'll jump into that in a little more of a deep dive next time. So uh, yeah, in the meantime, enjoy your week, and we'll catch you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>